Hello, welcome back to The Real Yvonne. Many of you have been asking me for quite some time now to do a video on Project Bluebeam. So that's what this video is today. Many of you may be asking, what is Project Bluebeam? So let me tell you. I'll give you a brief summary. It is a theory that claims NASA is attempting to implement a new age religion with the Antichrist at its head and start a new world order via technology, simulated second coming of Christ. Now, if you know anything like I know, we ain't ever walk on the moon. So if you're interested in seeing even more, because we about to go into this, keep watching. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Project Bluebeam consists of four steps. Oh, God. 9 9-11 became the mother of all news stories and completely changed the game for everyone. Fear, panic, and strife were imprinted in the public consciousness to what end? Not to go after Al-Qaeda, but rather to invade the sovereign nation of Iraq. Given such a drastically overt misstep on the part of a U.S. government led by an oil family. The question on some people's minds is whether or not this disaster was exploited or worse, engineered. The Gulf of Tonkin in the Vietnam War, Chiang Kai-shek in the Korean War. False flag operations are nothing new. However, according to some, the ultimate card to play might be yet to come. How do you grow the trillion dollar military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned about into a two or three trillion dollar program? You got to have a bigger enemy out there. Von Braun's purpose in life during the last years of his life, his dying years, was to educate the public and decision makers about space-based weapons. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. In 1977, I was at a meeting in Fairchild Industries, and in that room were a lot of charts on the walls with enemies, identified enemies, names that people had never heard of, names like Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi. But we were talking then about terrorists, the potential terrorists. No one had ever talked about this before. And they continued the conversation about how they were going to antagonize these enemies. And that at some point, there was going to be a war in the Gulf. According to these theorists, after the military industrial complex had its war against terrorism, the next enemy that Dr. Von Braun identified on Earth would be third world country fanatics. But with no more enemies left, the people would soon be taught to look to space. The next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, 
He kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card and remember, Carol, all of it is a lie. 99% of all the information out in the public on this subject is well-crafted disinformation designed to scare people to support the next phase in global warfare. And this kind of corruption is why the only things that are being made on this subject are things that redound to paranoia and fear in the military-industrial complex. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Now let's listen to this brief summary about the fake alien invasion. It's because you're defanging their whole war plan. The next big war is not terrorism. It's interstellar. And if you expose that it's a hoax, it takes all the steam out of their plan. I said, yes, but if we don't, we're cooked because there's no way you can have war that's interstellar and survive it. It'd be worse than mutual assured destruction because the technologies are you know, a thousand times worse than a hydrogen bomb. So I said, look, we're going to have to figure out how to deal with this. And it, the only way I know how to do it is put the sunlight in there and let people know what the truth is. So a man came along. If we go to the next slide. Um, and you probably have seen this. It's up on our website. Uh, when we first put it up, it had over 600,000 views. The next day, uh, the intelligence community went in and said there were 6,000 views. By the way, if you believe the metrics on Google and YouTube, I have a bridge to sell you. It's, it's all can be manipulated because it moves you down the search engines. So when this hit, within a couple of days, had 600,000 views. This man, William Pollock, his name is pronounced Pollock, uh, was a man, very good man, who gave me an interview only to be released posthumously after he died. And not long, a few years ago, I got a letter from his wife, significant other, I guess, they weren't technically married, uh, with a, a death certificate and a letter giving me permission. And he had, passed, he had passed away. And I have a lot of these, you know, and I honor my word about pe keeping a confidence. So what happened is that he gave me this interview, and in it, he talks about the development of RF radio frequency chip implants back in the 70s and 80s. And when he was developed, it was, it was totally an accidental thing that happened. He was with a company that developed it. it. He then got called into the CIA, and they started doing special programs for the CIA to develop it. And at a certain point, Siemens in Silicon Valley manufactured two billion of them, with a B, of these RF chips. And the way they work, I mean, they can be so miniaturized, you could eat something with it. It has a radio free, and it can transmit not only where you are, but the really advanced ones have a neurophone capability to control thought and behavior. Very sinister stuff. Um, so you can actually do a lot of psychological warfare with these RF frequency chips. Uh, now, that was the early stages in the 70s and 80s. Now, you figure, you know, 40 years later, they're more and more and more and more sophisticated. And as I've watched the whole UFO subculture sort of get involved with this whole fascination with abductions and, and implants, I went, yeah, but you know EG&G? On one of the plants is on the edge of the Area 51. They're the ones manufacturing the implants that you're taking out of these abduction victims. Absolutely. They're not coming from outer space. They don't need that. If you're interstellar, you're transdimensional. If you're transdimensional, you don't need an RF frequency plant chip to track anybody because their technologies are way beyond that. I said, this is human, 100%. 
and you better wake up. And so Powlett gave us this interview, and it was one of a dozen data points that I began to accumulate. And then, not many years ago, I get a document, the next one, which is chilling, has never been shown. It's from the Strategic Studies Institute, think tank, and it's dated 1995. And it was talking about all kinds of global security strategies. And, you know, you can look at it yourself, cult programmed graduates, blah, 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 who will be expected to participate in contrived UFO abduction scenarios. Listen carefully. Oh, we need the next one up. Um, Strategic Studies Institute. Is it? I can't see the screen. Is it up? All right. So... I loathe reading to people because, but this, I will. <laughs> and number two, create a global UFO cult, which will involve, this, this is what needs to be done in order to actuate this false flag operation, that will involve the abduction of citizens so as to foster an illusion that this earth is facing an extraterrestrial invasion. UFO abductees of preference will have an experience in computer technologies since that expertise will be required in future technocratic RMA scenarios. Use of experimental drugs, holographic projection capabilities, directed energy technologies, I'll get into that in a moment, induced auditory input. These are the neurophones I mentioned that Werner von Braun said the most dangerous thing is the neurophone non-local things that can be done to, to make people think they're having an experience when they're not. Um, input, experimental aircraft, well that's just a euphemism for man-made UFOs, and special effects costuming and stagecraft, among other things, will be used to persuade the abductees of the reality of their circumstances. Official denials regarding these events will employ reverse psychology to ensure that all such denials are taken as official confirmation of an imminent and or ongoing extraterrestrial invasion. This is the next page. UFO abductees will be persuaded to worship their anticipated ET conquerors in cult-enforced religious fashion. UFO cult networks will be controlled by U.S. intelligence to limit infiltration and ensure that dissidents do not disrupt UFO long-term long agendas. Uncontrollable dissidents will be assassinated, preferably by directed energy means. Dissociative satanic cult graduates will handle all such executions, i.e., when not actively lending logical and theatrical support to UFO abduction operations. Number three, directed energy surveillance and weapons technology of all types and caps will be used for purposes of spreading fear and confusion in the population at large under deniable circumstances for eliminating persons deemed adversarial to U.S. national security interests and for spotting, assessing, and manipulating potential re recruits to the RMA cause. Neurocybernetics and other psychotechnologies will be used to sow so confusion and hypochondria in the population. The symptoms and effects produced by these and other directed energy technologies will parallel the effects produced by various microbes, viruses, and chemical imbalances, thus compelling a large segment of society to seek medical intervention, which in turn will be a basis for their being used for medical experimentation under voluntary circumstances. Psychiatrists and psychologists will play an important role in these experiments, particularly where denying the efficacy of neuro cybernetics, psychotechnologies is concerned. Com citizens who complain of hearing voices will be used as a basis for generously government-funded schizophrenic-related brain research, on and on and on. It goes on. Now, if you're not falling out of your chair yet, what I want to tell you is that all of that has come to pass and came to pass between the 1950s and the 1970s. A man that I worked with before his death had developed a, an electronic system in 1956 or 54, 54, 
that would enable someone electronically to remote view anywhere and could also affect uh, these, some of these have been called radionic psychotronic weapon systems and they were developed decades ago now how hard is it to deploy them not hard and they're not used every day they're used enough to create a groundswell of conviction that there's an alien threat so you take that capability combine it with man-made ufos combine it with disinformation in general about the subject and also certain chemicals and you can launch an entire contagion of fear that's based on completely man-made false events so this is the false flag event i wanted to warn you about it and people say when is that going to happen i said it's happened already it's already happened the media the film industry any ufo conference you go to is going to be filled unwittingly usually not always unwittingly but usually with information that is this kind of disinformation designed to create an us versus them dynamic of an alien threat and the reason for it is that that is the only way to grow the military industrial complex you know leon panetta the cia director and then secretary of defense but when he was cia director said you know we're spending a 110 billion dollars a year chasing down 70 al-qaeda members in afghanistan ridiculous now let's take a look at this blu-ray project show in dubai
So, are you a believer now in Project Bluebeam? Or do you still believe our government would never do such a thing? Comment your thoughts below. There's more to come. If you're new here, please subscribe. Thumbs up this video. Um, check me out on Patreon as well. If you want to support this channel, you may do so via PayPal. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, let's get this conversation started. Let's stay respectful. Let's go. Hello, if you appreciate my dedication to upload informative videos for you every day, please show your appreciation by making a donation to my PayPal. The link is in the description box. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.